Yeah. How, how's everybody doing today? This is Antonio Moore coming to you from Tone Talks. I'm here with uh, somebody you guys might all know, Meta World Peace of the Los Angeles Lakers of the NBA. Yes, sir. Um, we're here to take today to talk about some some serious issues and also to just you know let him get some stuff off of his chest and me to get some off of mine. We talked a few months back when he was doing his documentary, uh, his wonderful documentary on, on boxing. You want to tell everybody the name again, just so. Yeah, man. We talked when I was doing When the Bell Rings. I thought it was a very inspirational story about Dino Wells from uh, New Orleans. Yeah, great story. yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, on and, iTunes right now. And de definitely check out that um, uh, that uh, other interview on my, on my YouTube because it has the commercial in it and the trailer and everything. It was really uh, really well done. So what I what I you know brought me on today to talk about, of course, is all the issues that's going on and and the role and responsibility of African American athletes. Um, right. and, and, t and taking part in all of these issues, you know, from Black Lives Matters to the police shootings to some of the issues we've seen with uh, with athletes more recently. We're going to go through that. I guess where I wanted to uh, start was, you know, what kind of triggered me to reach out to Meta was I, I, I sent him a piece I did on ESPN's new song, Undefeated. And uh, they published a piece and, and, they, and they titled it, Violence is Not the Answer We Seek, that I did uh, yesterday. And uh, Meta retweeted that for me, and I appreciate that. And I definitely think that's kind of kind of the message that I'm putting out, which is we need to push towards social, political, and economic changes, and violence isn't necessarily the answer. How do you feel? I feel 100% like violence is not the answer. But what people got to understand, when you're dealing with racist people, and I'm going to start right there, right? When you're dealing with racist people, you got to understand they're definitely trying to divide like black people. So when you say racist people, right? That people got to understand that you're not saying white people, right? You're saying racist people, right? So, um, and not all white people are racist people. But when we came over here hundreds and hundreds of years ago, they separated us from our elders, right? From our mentors, from our advisors, from our parents, okay? And when they separated us, the babies had no guidance, okay? You understand? The babies had no guidance, right? So now you get a bunch of little wild babies running around under, you know, the guidance of a system. You understand what I'm saying? And that system is not really put in place for the babies, my grandparents, my parents, my greats, my great, 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 great grandparents, right? So now you get um, people who might come off as hoodlums because we have no morals, no values, right? You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Those values was with us when we were in our land, okay? Now, when, some, when we were brought over here as slaves and when some of the black people actually sold us because some of our own people sold us to white people, right? So now you get uh, people who look like, you know, they're hoodlums, thugs, because we don't play the part. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And now you go to 2016, and we're here right now trying to make it a better place, dealing with what we have to deal with, okay? Once again, people are trying to separate us. So I'm not for the violence. Absolutely not. Fuck the violence. You hear me? Um, but what I am... But, but what they're not going to do to me is make me fearful and not support people who's being oppressed. I, I, I'm not going to, they're not going to separate me like ever, ever again. You know, I'm standing with my people and they have to understand that. And in conversation, you know, I have to let people know that, man. You know, because I see the, the, the racism trying to separate us, and then I see it trying to distract us from peace. You understand? And I would not let mean people distract me from peace. No matter what's going on, no matter who's dying out there, no matter how many black people die, like, my focus is, my focus is peace. You understand? And yeah, it's fucked up, and it's unfortunate, but I will still stand by what I believe in, which is, which is, you know, uh, taking care of this earth and being very, very peaceful. You understand? And, and, and that's where I stand with the whole with the whole matter. No, I definitely see where you're coming from. And the interesting thing is to look at this thing over a historical arc. 
It's funny because yeah. when I did my documentary on Freeway Rick called Cracking the System, mm-hmm. you know, one of the dynamics we saw was looking at Rick being bringing in almost $3 million a day while Magic Johnson is making million dollar, a million dollars a year. That's back right. in like his first contract. And over this arc since 1980, while incarceration numbers have skyrocketed for African-American males, we saw the rise of the NBA in, in many ways and the rise of the new black multi-million dollar athlete. Of course. And, you know, fundamentally, we can't escape the reality that black male incarceration, actually black males and brown males, but particularly black male incarceration is something we haven't seen in any first world country. And I, I just to, so everybody can kind of like get a frame for the discussion, I'm pull up a chart right now. And what you find is that today there are about 800,000, 770,000 African-American males in jail and prison. And if you took nine countries from India, Great Britain, if you took nine countries, those nine countries with two billion people have only about 730,000 prisoners. And fundamentally, what you're dealing with is that there's only 20 million black males counting babies and old men. 20 million. And so this over-incarceration of African-American men is part of what's fueling Black Lives Matter, along with a number of other issues involving economics and and education. And so when we talk about, like, white people, I don't think we're talking about it on an intimate individual level as much in, anymore as we were in the right. 60s where it's like somebody would call you a racial epithet, somebody would call you a slur. We're talking about the institutional reality of white privilege and the cost of black... Well, I, 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 I'm not going to say I agree. Like, everything you say, I'm going to listen and answer because people got to understand, like, I have my own opinion. You understand? Um, so, you know, so what you were saying, I think a lot of the things is right. A lot of the things is right, you know. Um, so, the incarceration is ridiculous. Going to jail back in the days for some weed, smoking some weed on the corner, and now it's legal for me to have a weed shop. You understand? And I can make so much money selling marijuana if I wanted to. Now, I don't have a weed shop, but I can and it'll be to- totally legal for smoking the same thing that we were no, I was saying, the same thing that we went to jail for, which is my homies on the block in the hood, which they were called gangsters and thugs, people that I seen grow up, people that I seen moms on crack, father not in their life, and now they grow up gangsters, my friends, right? They call them thugs. These people go to jail for selling marijuana. Right, uh-huh. and, and now they come out of jail, can't get a job. Now they back in the streets. You understand? And now they, some of these guys are still in jail. Some guys are dead. Some guys maybe in jail for life. Did, did some crimes. Okay, the same crimes that's that initiated it. It's legal to do to uh, you know to have these services now. Right. So that's a problem. Yeah. Like people could say I made it out, but that's not true. Right? You know. I didn't make nothing. My my, my my people under the same circumstance that I, that I grew up under, they still back in, in the hood. Now, with that being said, you know, my staff, I have more white people on my staff than black people. And I am not ashamed of shit because I don't look at color, but at the same time, I'm going to address these issues. You understand? I'm not afraid to address the issues, even though it puts me at risk to earn, to earn money because... You know, I'm talking out and speaking out. You understand? Mm-hmm. And sometimes I speak out so bluntly and so direct. You know, it could uh, it could um, scare away some corporate opportunities for me. But I don't give a rat's ass. You understand? And at the same time, I'm not going to go out and just hire a bunch of black people just because you know I don't have a lot of black people on staff. So I have my own god opinion about everything, and the up basically. The change, but with all that being said, I'm not going to let it anger me. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not going to let my number one focus is building strong families and teaching kids how to be good partners and not treat you know women like which I always say teaching these kids the importance on being a family, a good father, a good partner, you know. And with all this other crazy shit happening, I can't even focus on what I want to focus on, and that's and, and I learned that. Don't, don't be distracted, 
you know, by, and my message is still, you know, peace, you know, and yeah, I, I speak very blunt. I got a bad mouth, you know, but only because it's coming from a place of passion. That's why you hear me curse sometimes. Well, so, so, so we're going back to the nineties and, and, and we're, and we're looking at the incarceration and everything that was going on, you know, when incarceration is ramping up in, in 93 and 92, you know, as Bill Clinton comes in, is there a dialogue when you come into the league? I believe 97 or 98, right? Yeah. When you come into the league, is there a dialogue about incarceration or is it more seen like they must have done something wrong if they're going to jail? When somebody go to jail, it's always that they must have done something wrong. Um, I never thought like that. You know, I always thought that you guys are being set up. I would tell my friends, you guys are able to sell drugs. You guys are getting all these free phones. I say, you are being set up, man. Y'all going to jail. Y'all putting yourself at risk. And what happens? 57 of my people were locked, locked away. 57 people I knew. And people might think, yeah, this guy's a thug. He knows drug dealers. What you want me to do? That's, that's what I know. That's where I've been. That's where I grew up. What you want me to do? I'd say, I don't know these guys. Yeah, I do. You understand? Mm. 50 like the people that I knew personally. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yo, you guys don't understand that y'all being <laughs> systematically set up, man. The things are not that easy. You just can't get gun and drugs and then sell them. Against the law, you guys need to stop doing this. But it's that quick money, you know, that comes, and now you get locked up. By the time they 15, 16, 17, 18, they come time they 30, life over for the most part because you can't get a job. You know, when you got that criminal record, unless you like cash really ingenious ideas, you came out making 30 million dollars. You understand? And Guys, the, 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 the black community don't understand that you guys are being systematically set up. No, you. I, I totally, I, I get what you're saying because, like, we covered Lynn Bias, you know. Lynn Bias dies, Celtics had just picked him, and supposedly from a crack overdose, you know. And that kind of led into the big ramp up of, 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 of disparity in crack sentencing. Do you remember that when that happened? I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I, I remember it briefly. I wasn't a big sports fan when I was a kid, so I, I know the story later in my career. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah, but absolutely, man. Come on, like, they're putting people, are, I don't know who, I'm saying, are persons. Mm -hmm. I ain't going to say they, because they is too generic. A person is breaking down the community. A couple people. We don't know who they are. You know, because... And you can find Osama bin Laden, and you can find all this other stuff. You, you can find where the, the you know, the negative uh, influence is coming into a neighborhood. You can stop it. That's what we need the police for, to stop this stuff from coming into our neighborhoods so we can have clean neighborhoods. Nobody want to grow up how I grew up, or how other people grew up in the fifth ward. Nobody want to grow up like that, man. Tell me a little bit about that. Tell me, where did, where did you grow up? And, like, tell me a little bit about your little bit and your background. And we grew up hustling. That's it. Hustling. Crack, weed, guns, violence. Sometimes you have fun. Nobody want to grow up like that. You want to grow up reading, dancing, playing with your mama and your daddy. You know? But those opportunities are not there all the time. You know? And that's what people don't understand. When you, when you some people do understand when you got all that frustration. Unlike me, I was able to get psychologists, a psychologist, and counseling. Well, if you never had that, you got all that frustration built up. By the time you're 30, you're going to see massive chaos and frustration. And that's what you see sometimes from the black community. And it's, and, and it's smart. And, and sometimes the black community don't understand. And then some people in the black community are making it worse by getting the energy more crazy. You know, you don't, you don't get it more crazy. You got to explain to them what's happening. Calm them down. No, I, I yeah. definitely agree. And I, I think that this moment, one, one of the things that we really have to grasp, I think, is the, the, the context of having a black attorney general and a black president. And, and, and the reality that maybe we as a, a, as a group haven't put enough pressure on either of them to make systemic changes and to really make demands. And, and 
you know, as we, as we're moving forward into this last part of Barack, Barack's presidency, I think that's where our focus should be with the marching. But the thing to make money is not coming back to the foundation of life, like the love. Part. So, did you watch the ESPYS? I mean, I didn't watch the ESPYS. Okay, uh, you heard you heard about uh, LeBron James, CP3, Carmelo Anthony, and Dwayne Wade speaking out, correct? I, I heard about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, my thing is this, like, those guys, I, I look up to those guys, they're younger than me, but I really got a, uh, I got a soft spot for those guys. Uh-huh. Especially LeBron, big fan of LeBron, like, love LeBron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? And what but, do you, um, I guess, what do you think about them speaking out at the prime of their careers? It didn't really do nothing for me because, like, you know, I feel like, you know, when you're from the hood, you got to come out early, you got to speak earlier than that. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like myself, I put myself on the line early, always talking about the hood, always representing the ghetto. So I'm very proud of them for bringing stuff to light. But you got to do it when bad things are not happening. Even when the world is at ease and at peace, it's still people in the hood that need to know that they can relate to you. Mm-hmm. Like when I walk the streets, if I go to any projects, right, I'm going to get respect. Not out of fear, just because they know I'm a real nigga. You understand? And it's been like that from day one. And and it's not ignorant. You know, that, that's a communication I have with people from Dallas or Chicago or New Orleans or Queensbridge, Brooklyn. That's a real nigga. You know, that's just a communication I have, right? And that's because it's been like that from day one. And it's not from an ignorant place. It's from a place of, of, of love. You understand? And you can't wait until guys is getting shot by police, you know, to instill that connection, you know, with people you grew up just like. You understand? So I feel it's like a little bit too late. They, they got to they gotta continue to do this work and not just for the boys club, you know, and not just for these different charities. Like, you got to get to work early and not just um, against other groups or against racist groups or they got to be just from your heart. These kids need help before all this crazy racist stuff is happening. These kids been needed help, you know, and, and it got to gotta happen now. You know, LeBron caught a lot of flack for his response on Tamir Rice. You know, Tamir got killed, and LeBron's first response is, we got to see all the facts. And, and Black America really wanted him to, to take a stand. And when you speak about walking through barbershops, I can't help but remember Muhammad Ali. Because that was one of the things that he really tried to help other black right. athletes understand is you got to be of the people. You know what I'm saying? But that's the thing. Like, LeBron don't have to do nothing that he don't want to do first. Though. That's his career. He don't know what happened with Tamir Rice. So, how, so just because the facts and the news, the news lie, man. So he don't know. He's right. But what, what, what you have to do is not wait until you know problems escalate. Like right now, we had a period where no black people got shot today, right? All right, cool. What are people doing now? Not just LeBron. People are saying, why all the pressure got to be on LeBron? You know? What about the other people? You know, what about the other guys that's out there? What about black families that's living in the suburbs that, that's not even speaking out? What about those black people? What about those black people that's just living their everyday life? Why, why does it have to be? Well, part of it is 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 this reality I just told you about with the numbers where, you know, it's funny because, it, you know, when fame comes, you can be famous for so many things. And, and, and just as much as being famous for being an athlete, kind of famous for being young, black, and rich. Because we don't have... Well, we, I, I, know, I, know, I know black people got to tell me, don't go back to the hood. Mm. Rich black people. I, I ain't going back there. And I'm like... I'm going back there. You understand? When I won a championship, they was like, you're going to Disney World? I said, no, I'm going to Compton. That's where I'm going. You understand? Yeah. That's where I'm going. I'm back yeah. to the hood. And, and it sounds ignorant to somebody who don't know what the struggle was. Uh-huh. And then some people will manipulate the message, what I'm saying. And then they'll try to make me look crazy in front of America, right? Or in front of the world. I just want people to know, you're here from me. You're going to hear it real. You know? I'm from the streets. I love the streets. You understand? That's not ignorant. You don't know what we've been through growing up in the streets. No, I totally get it. And, and one of the things that I, I kind of wanted to ask you was, 
are we seeing with the new astronomical amounts that that that, that NBA players are being paid? Are we seeing more space to speak out? Because I might not need that. Everybody needs extra money, but I don't need your sponsorship money because I already am guaranteed a contract. So I have the vo the space to actually have a voice now. Is that playing a role in this thing? I mean, I don't want to. I, I don't want to. I don't want to. First off, I don't want to talk about the sponsors because now we're making. You know what I'm saying? Now, now we're making it. You know, look like making it look like the sponsors are racist. Uh -huh. And I don't know these sponsors. I don't know these CEOs. All right, cool. They're in position of power. I can't. I'm not gonna play the race card on all people in position of power. You know, but what I would say is, yeah, people were scared to speak out because we're losing endorsements. Saying crazy. Or we're losing endorsements just for keeping it hood. I can't even do a Sprite commercial talking about, yeah, I'm from the streets, yeah, and I drink a Sprite. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I got to sound a certain way, but I want to sound like this. But mm -hmm. me, I'm always going to sound how I sound. I'm going to be me regardless. You know what I'm saying? But people are afraid to be themselves and stay connected. Yeah. But nowadays, people are speaking out more. The money's crazy big. But who cares about the money? You know what I'm saying? And you were speaking earlier about the Attorney General and Obama. Um, and people not putting enough pressure on them because of our situation. All right, cool. We're not in a situation where economically, you don't have a lot of money in our communities. But then when you get the money, what happens after that? What about the love, the peace? What about like treating our earth the right way? Like, people forgetting what life is about. So, that's the distraction that I've been talking about. Even when we become better economically, are we still going to the roof up? Are we going to, what, get more money and buy more Lamborghinis and more gas cars and still the environment up? Mm -hmm. We still have so many other questions to answer. And you know what I'm saying? So, people are automatically going to be, okay, now we're better economically. we got cars, driving Bugattis, you know, but not treating the earth right, right? So, oh, we're okay, but we're still we're still the environment, right? So there's so many questions that got to be answered. And people got to understand what life is about. That's, that's, what, that's, that's the problem. What's your thoughts on Black Lives Matter and, and the recent like protests? So Black, Li Black Lives Matter started by three sisters, spread all across the country, has been the energy behind all the protests. What's your thoughts on Black Lives Matter and the protests in general that we're seeing uh, happening across the country? I think um, the Black Lives Matter movement is very necessary. Um, towards people who were targeting uh, vulnerable black people. I think that's what it was necessary for. I don't think, um, I, I know Black Lives Matter supporters I have white friends there at the end of the day. So people can, don't, don't get it mistaken that, you know, Black Lives Matter is, you know, the, the, the foundation of what it meant is to just be reckless. That's ridiculous. They did that to us already. Um, there are some people that are, have a lot of rage and might use Black Lives Matters to do stupid <laughs> and, you know, harmful <laughs> maybe to shoot officers and maybe scream Black Lives Matter. That's not what Black Lives Matters mean. Black Lives Matters mean stop killing us for no god <laughs> reason. That's it. Because at the end of the day, we're struggling as a people, but we're happy. But then they just spoil our happiness sometimes. We'll have a good day, then we'll kill black folk. Like, leave us the f alone. You know what I'm saying? Let us come out of this struggle. How are we going to do it? Because we're going to do it. But don't try to keep us down. You know what I'm saying? Don't try to keep us down and then, and then make us go crazy. Yeah, we're going to go crazy. We're killing our fucking people. I, absolutely. We're going to go crazy. Let us be happy and leave us the f alone if you don't want to be around us. You understand? If you don't want to be around black people, get the f away from us. We didn't ask to be in this mother <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We're here and we're trying to do as best as we can. Yeah. We're trying to enjoy it and try and enjoy it and have fun. In our poor environments, we have fun. So, so when you look across the country, we see Trayvon kind of started this whole thing. But then we come forward, we see everything from Tamir Rice to now Alton Sterling and Philando Castile, and we go all the way to Eric Garner and your, and your back back, uh, back in the neck of the woods. And so what are your general like feelings about these these killings of these of these black people? My thing is this. 
I feel a, a, a bunch of ways. First, my best friend is an officer. She, like my best friend, known her since I was like eight, and like love her, and she loves cops. You know what I'm saying? She's black, and she's my number, like my best friend. Um, so, and I work with cops. Sometimes I have jobs and I hire cops. You understand? I have a lot of great times with cops at bars, drinking some beer. I don't drink a lot, but sometimes I have a beer with a cop. So I feel a bunch of different ways about what's happening. Um, I, I've been around situations where people get pulled over by an officer and they need to shut the f*** up. You're talking too much. You know what I'm saying? This is the authority and, and you're talking too much. All right, cool. And I've also been on the other side where corrupt officers, you know, doing too much and being very corrupt. They, they, they're not police officers. Look at corrupt police officers as police officers. You know, I'm not going to generalize every cop. I'm not going to do that. If you if you put on a badge and you're a bad person, you're not a cop. Cop is for, to protect and to serve. That's a cop. You know, anybody else who got any other agenda is not a cop. Mm. You understand? It's a bad person. You understand? Call him a pig. Okay. A cop is somebody who you can talk to. A cop is somebody when you got a problem, they're going to be there for you. You understand? A cop is somebody that's going to be in the community making the community better. You understand? That's a cop. A corrupt cop is not a cop. And people got to stop putting all these cops in one category because it's wrong. Now everybody talking about all police is bad. All cops is bad. Now everybody want you know, be against the police. That's that's ridiculous. These guys making thirty five thousand dollars a year, forty thousand dollars a year. Come on, man. Who the f- be in the on fire making forty thousand dollars a year? Come on, man. Even black cops, white cops, Puerto Rican cops. But sometimes you got you got to work, man. Unless they want these guys to be homeless, you can't generalize every single cop. I'm not going to do that. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going to do that. No, no, I totally get it. And, and and the story, you know, that I did on Undefeated was about the, the, the sad reality of the Baton Rouge. There were three cops slain, and I feel condolences for each one of them. Uh, but I was I particularly focused on, on I believe, it was Montreal Jackson and his story. And he had just made this Facebook post. He had just had a newborn baby, African-American male. And the Facebook post was just so moving because it was almost like, a call to whether you're a protester, another right. cop, just come pray with me. If you need a hug, I'll give you one of those. And it seems like he was the quintessential version of what we're, what you're saying right now. And to see him shot down and slain is right. such the interesting dynamic when you come to Black Lives Matter. Do that? Does Black Lives Matter when you're dressed in blue? You know? Is that what he said? I, I actually wrote that in my piece. Do Black Lives Matter when you're dressed in blue? He actually just, just displayed like, he didn't feel that the city loved him, and he felt, as an African American cop, oh, wow. he was dealing with a lot of, of bad eyes and, and judgment. Listen, man, you get a guy, you're talking about black people, right? So you get a black guy out of college, want to make a good living for his family, opportunity to be an officer, he becomes an officer. He can't make no changes, he can suggest to the, to the sergeant how to handle the community, he can't make no changes, you can't get mad at him for something like that, for changes he can't make, you can't get mad at other officers they have bosses and the bosses, you know, tell them what to do, you know, you can't even get mad at the sergeants at, for the most part because then the sergeants got bosses everybody got somebody, to, you know, to report to so you can't generalize these people, man, some of these people, the majority of these cops are good cops, but I'm telling you you get a handful that make it bad, that make it chaotic and it's easy to do, to kill somebody. You make it chaotic. It's really, it's really easy to do. It's not hard. It's not hard to do. You know, do something stupid, and you make America go crazy. You understand? And that's what, and that's what's happening right now. But what you got to understand is, you know, you can't put the pressure on Obama or the Attorney General. You know, you got to really understand that sometimes people want to make you go crazy. You got to relax. And it's hard to do under these circumstances. You gotta be smart, you know. You gotta get back to what life is about. 
got to always get back to the point. What life is about is about family. Yeah, they're breaking up our family, so that's how it's hard to do that when they're breaking up the families of daddies in prison. Yeah, and, and, and so much of this and so much of this is being brought down to the individual cop level. And where I do agree with you is is going to the system at large. I mean, when you have a mass incarceration system that, that that has the numbers we talked about earlier. When you have private prisons that are primarily based where black people are located in the deep south, you know, you see them all through the bottom of the country, but somehow they're not in the middle. They're not in the upper parts of the country. These for profit prisons, you do have like th this this kinder this this explosion of, of energy that that if not released and we don't deal with as a country can, can cause so many issues and i guess my my question would be to you before i have actually three last questions the first one is what would you do about racial injustice like at large i know it's kind of a general question but you never know what to expect from you i mean i think what you do is at the school system and i've been talking about this when i went to capitol hill you got to start teaching these kids the values and morals and the importance of being a good partner and being a good family man, being a good father. It's more important than anything else, right? Because when you have those values, you know, you're thinking straight, you're making the right decisions. That's the number one thing they need to have in these schools. These kids should learn that at an early age because we're not learning that. But some of the kids' parents are in prison. Right? So we're not learning this as a black community. If you want to change anything, change the school system. You understand? Attack the school system. That's number one. You know, um, the other thing you can do is, you know, you, you got to kind of somehow, you know, attack the law a little bit. You got to challenge, you know, uh, these officials, you know, on, on, on their law because it's not in our favor. You understand? We're in a situation where we're never going to catch up. Never. Now, some people might want it to be like that forever, but we're never going to catch up, you know, with all these crazy laws. And then some of us is in prison for laws, you know, uh, for, for crimes that are legal now. You know what I'm saying? How I, and I, I, I would address that issue, you know? And then the other issue is, um, I, I don't know whatever else I would address. I would just... Um, you know, continue on to teach the values of life, you know, in our schools, you know, especially where, you know, I don't know what a, a Latino goes through or a white person goes through. I know what I've been through as far as struggle. So in my black community, I would say, you know, teach values, 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 most important thing. And this is the last two questions. Um, if you had to, like, say an athlete that you look back at that did civil protests, that did social justice action correctly, you know, from Ali to Robinson to, you know, Owens, if you, who, who, who do you think about that, that you say that guy did it right. We all need to kind of like look back at how he did it. Jim um, Brown. Obviously Muhammad Ali, man. You know, I feel like Muhammad Ali had his own voice. He was for some things. He, all, he always challenged people that was against him and people that was with him challenged everybody. And, I mean, that was pretty, pretty, pretty amazing. You know, um, Jim Brown was pretty amazing. You know, challenge, always challenge people. You know, um, at a time when you weren't supposed to challenge anybody. Mm -hmm. That's tough, man, you know. I don't think I would have had the heart to do that. Because who knows if somebody's going to come up and kill you. You know, for fighting what, um, for speaking and fighting for what you believe in. Mm. You know, um, there's a lot of frauds out there. I don't want to say any names. Yeah, because that's wrong. But there's a lot of frauds out there. Um, there are some people out there that can be better, and I don't want to say no names because I just I don't want to get into it. But there's some people out there I think that could be better, but they make it worse. And they're filling people up with so much rage. And that's why you know, I kind of turned to Buddhism a little bit. I got away from all that other stuff. You know, because people fill you up with so much rage and so much you know, anger. And that's not what life is supposed to be about. You know, it's supposed to be a body connection with your environment. 
body connection and the mind connection connection with the people you're around. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes, and it's so hard to get to that point. You know, that's so much stress. You know, now in, in this environment, and I try to stay away from the stress as much as I can. I, I don't do a great job at it, but I do as best as I can. Yeah, man, and I just appreciate you coming on to Tone Talks and having this discussion because. You know, this is what young brothers need to hear. You never know what little tidbit that you said today that might, you know, help somebody through their day or make them make a better decision tomorrow. Um, the last question I'm going to ask you is something everybody want to know. You know, Kobe done stepped out. Duncan done stepped out. What what, what's, what, what do we expect from, from uh, Metal World Peace coming into next season? Yeah, I'm nice. Understand? Yeah. I don't want nobody to get offended by that. I'm talking, you know, I want to make sure that I'm nice. I can play, you know what I'm saying, and um, but you know if I get a chance to play, I play. You know, um, I had a great time. You know, being in, playing basketball, I can still play. I love, I love to play. I play in Venice Beach. I play everywhere. Um, I can still give NBA plays buckets when I play. If I don't play, you know, it's not on me. You know, so I don't want people to think I can't play no more. It's just sometimes, you know, you got to do different things. You know, in this profession. But I can still play at a high level. So we'll see. All right, all right, man. Well, thank you again for your time. Oh, yeah, let me say one more thing to people. I want everybody to know, anytime in this conversation, if you heard anything with passion or anger, don't be affected by it either way. I don't want you guys to become, to have rage or nothing like that. I'm speaking from my heart. But just understand, stay peaceful, you know, stay grounded, you know, understand what life is about. Life is bigger than economics. It's bigger than cars, bigger than money. You understand? It's about family, and that's it. Tell us about the shirt. Word, shirt. This is my clothing line, Yin Yang. There's always two sides to people, you know what I'm saying? And you got to find that balance right in the center. Always find that balance, and the shirt is available. The pandasframe.com, you know, and that's what Metal World Peace is. All right, man. Well, thank you so much for your time, and uh, definitely look forward to seeing how, how people react. Absolutely. All right, peace. All right.